Okay, this is 12.1. It's the start of our next chapter, all about electromagnetism. So we're talking about magnets, basically, in this chapter. Um, but we're also going to look at how electricity can cause things to become magnets. So there's a few important ideas in this chapter, and this, this lesson is going to just introduce a couple of those ideas. To start out with, well, magnets. You probably have an idea what a magnet is, but what I want to say about magnets here is that they create a magnetic field which causes things around them to experience a force. So just like gravity, just like how we have a gravitational field, we also have a magnetic field. So magnets create a field around them that causes things to experience a force. Right? You probably know that when you have um, metallic things near a magnet, they experience a force. They're either drawn towards the magnet or sometimes they're pushed away from the magnet. So these magnetic fields, they are an area of space that is affected by an object's magnetic force. And so it's just like a gravitational field where things are affected by the gravitational force. But it's a bit different. It's a bit tricky because with gravity, the direction is always downwards. It's always towards the center of the object. Magnetism is different. The tricky thing with magnetism is the direction, which is always changing. So we'll say here for direction, it's more complicated than... Oops more complicated than gravity. And the way we figure out direction at any point is that we use field lines. So we have some rules of how we can draw these magnetic field lines, and the field lines show us what the direction of the force should be at any point near a magnet. There's some pictures below of these field lines. Um, so you can see that we have a bar magnet and we have these field lines. So you see these arrows. And so it means that any object, any sort of particle on that path, if I have a, this, um, let's say I have a red particle here on that path, well, the force it experiences is going to be that direction because that's how the field is pointing. If I have a particle over here, then it experiences a force that direction, because that's how I've drawn my field lines. So you can see, if you put a particle anywhere on any of these field lines, you can tell what direction the force is going to be based on the direction that the field lines are pointing. So all we need to know is how to draw these field lines. And we have some rules about that. So magnetic field lines, we've got a few rules. Number one, they always point from the North Pole to the South Pole. Okay. So they always point from the North Pole to South Pole when you're outside the magnet. And they point from south to north inside. All right, so that's the first rule. 
The second rule when we're drawing our field lines is that they can never, ever, ever cross each other. They never cross each other. If you have a field line, no other field line can go across it. So that's the second rule. And the third rule here is that the field lines should be closer together, closer together where the field is stronger. So the closer together our lines are, the stronger the field is at that point. So again, we can take a, a look at a few of these pictures here. You can see that we've drawn our field lines. We're always starting from the North Pole here and just going in these sort of curves towards the South Pole. You can see that we have lines going straight out of the North, straight into the South from who knows where. These are our, are our field lines. And along those lines, you can see we actually have a bunch of pictures of compasses. And that's just to indicate the direction of the force. A compass just like a compass that you use here to navigate, to, to see where north is, is just a way of detecting a magnetic field. So we've got a bunch of, of compasses drawn here, and you can see that this one is pointing that direction, this one is pointing that direction. So they're just a way of indicating the direction of the force. That's what all these compasses are for. So we have a second magnet here. We've got the north pole. So all of our field lines are going from north to south. And they sort of curve so that you can see all of these lines are starting very close together at the North Pole, which means the field is stronger there. And they sort of spread out and then come back and, and get close together again at the South Pole. And you can see even the Earth. The Earth is actually a big magnet. And so we've got the Earth here. And of course, we're used to saying that this top part here is the North Pole and this bottom part is the South Pole. That's usually what we say. But in terms of magnets, the North Pole on the Earth is actually the South Magnetic Pole. And the South Pole is the North Magnetic Pole. It's actually backwards. So our magnetic field lines do go from down here, which is the North Magnetic Pole, down near Antarctica and Australia and, and all of that. And you can see that they, they go on these paths again in that direction towards the Magnetic South Pole. OK. So those are our magnetic field lines. Um, you can see there's a few pictures of actual magnets and what's happening here. So you can see again we've got our North Pole and our South Pole. And you can't see the direction here, but you can see still the shape. So we've got a bunch of metal filings here, and you can see that they all follow that same sort of shape. And you can see that in between all the lines are going straight across, and they sort of spread out as you get further away into these circles. Again, notice never the lines never ever cross each other. They're always separate. And notice when we have two North Poles, well, our field lines here, we've got fields coming out of the North Pole, but they can't go into a North Pole. So we've got a field coming out of this North, north Pole, and this North Pole, and they can't cross each other. So they create this, this field here where they're pushing everything away from those points. And you can see then the field sort of curves away like this, away like this. Same over here, away like that. OK, so that's how these field lines work. And you'll get some practice doing those field lines. This one here says, um, draw a bar magnet with the north and south poles and its magnetic field lines, including compass indications of the direction of the field at various points. OK, so I'll just draw my magnet here, bar magnet. We've got a north pole here, south pole here. Our field lines go from the north to the south, like this, north to south. And as we get further away, they spread out a bit more, just like this. And it said, put some compass directions on them. So I'll put a compass right here. Um, so if I was to draw my compass, I can draw it, I'll draw it like this with, with red. So here's my compass, and you can see that I've got my dark arrow pointing forwards. And so usually we've got a dark arrow pointing forwards, and then you've got uh, a light arrow pointing sort of backwards on our compass. And likewise down here, same idea, 
our dark arrow is pointing in the direction of the field. So I'm just filling in that dark arrow. And then we have a light arrow going back. So there's some compass directions. I'll fill in a couple more arrows just so it's very clear what direction our fields are going. They're going this way, this way, and there we go. So um, give a try on those two homework problems, and uh, I'll see you in the next lesson.